Hey guys, I'm Mike Troll with Click, and today I wanted to share with you one of my latest achievements when diving headfirst into the world of the Internet of Things, also better known as IoT. So what is IoT? In summary, today's modern definition can refer to any number of sensors or interconnected devices that not only collect and share information, but also have the ability to be controlled by other devices, such as opening a garage door with your smartphone you're playing with IoT. Monitoring your progress of your health with your fitness tracker, you're playing with IoT. Triggering an irrigation system when soil moisture levels are low, that's IoT in action. Now the concept of IoT really is nothing new. It's been around for a long time, dating back as early as the 1800s, when visionaries dreamt of machines communicating with one another. I'm not going to go into that, but you can check out this great resource to learn more about its history. Over the years, its interpretation has grown and just got faster, smarter, easier, and more powerful, enabling almost anyone to turn anything into an IoT device. That's where I come in. Inspired by our big data IoT race game at Connections, I wanted to learn more, how it worked, what was going on under the covers, how was the data being collected and processed, etc. Inquisitive and charming as I am, I spoke with our amazing architects, Daniel Lumkeman, Raymond Neves, and my product marketing partner in crime, Adam Mayer. I got my questions answered. But not only did I get those answers, but Daniel even hooked me up with a microcontroller known as a Wemos Mini D1. I had no clue what it was or what it did. I did my research and started to learn more about these little things. In summary, I discovered that these devices are based on an open source electronics platform that uses hardware and software known as Arduino. Arduino is an open source company and community that designs and manufactures microcontrollers, sensors, and kits that can be used to build interactive devices that can control almost anything in the physical and digital world. So I put on my IoT hat and I got to work. I learned about the Arduino IDE, which is used to write programs called sketches based on the C language. I learned about shields, which are add-on devices that extend the main controller's capabilities such as writing to SD cards, displaying output, connecting to the internet, even powering up devices. And then of course there were the sensors used to collect and emit data, such as temperature, humidity, moisture, light, sound, and movement. The list goes on. At the same time, I learned how to wire up my devices on a breadboard so it would accept input and produce output. Overall, I learned enough to try something that I originally thought about at Connections, and of course it was retro gaming related. Wouldn't it be cool if I could capture my game movements from my control pad as I played a game on my Atari 2600? I could then feed that data into ClickSense and produce some analysis on the movements. I could even augment the data with game titles and player info and scoring to create game and player stats. The data could even tell me which game would wear out my controller the most. Collect enough and you could even predict the lifespan of your controller. Obviously these may not be pragmatic but it was definitely a fun way to learn about IoT while applying it to something I love, retro gaming and of course Click. So let's take a look at the hardware and software involved, and I'll even provide a demonstration of it in action. I could tell you that Nolan Bushnell wasn't thinking about this when he first established Atari in 1972. Okay, so this is the original layout. I have a custom controller that is modified to work with a uh, Atari 2600. And that is plugged into the DV9 input, which is plugged into these terminal blocks, which then goes to the Atari 2600. And then attached to the breadboard, I have my Arduino with the SD shield. And this is hooked up to my computer so I could download the program to it or upload the program to it and then um, perform the control functions as I mentioned. I also attach little LEDs so you can actually see the different movements that occur. Basically it is registering five volts coming from the Atari and then when you perform a action on the control pad what it does is kind of lower the voltage or disconnect the voltage. So that's what's happening there. So we're actually registering those volts into these analog inputs that are attached to the Arduino Uno. So to give you an example of how this is going to work, I have a program that I wrote within the Arduino IDE. 
and uh, that program looks like this. And basically, it allows me to accept my inputs and write the data to the uh, SD card. So we're going to go to what's called the serial monitor, and I'm going to clear the output, and I'm going to reset the Arduino. And what's going to happen is, is I've augmented this to also include player statistics, so the player name and the game type. So as you can see on the screen there, we have Space Invaders. So enter the game title. I'm going to type in Space Invaders. Space Invaders. And then enter the player name, and the player name is going to be Mike. And as I hit enter, you're going to start seeing the LED showing that it's registering data on the screen. I'm going to start the game. And I'm going to use my controller. And you'll notice in the data collection, the numbers are actually changing with each input, pressing a fire, moving left and right, for example. So we'll just play this for a few minutes just to get a general idea of what's happening. Let's say we've collected enough data here. So I'm just going to stop the actual data collection and we're going to shut off the Atari and I'm going to change the game. Let's try uh, Missile Command this time. So I put on Missile Command. Okay, I had to enter in my score for Space Invaders. Let's just say it was like 1600 and then we're going to continue with the next game. So the next game here is Missile Command. And the player here is Jane. Press Enter. Now we're collecting data. Now we're going to collect Missile Command movements. Now this movement is more than left and right and fire. There's left, right, up, down, and fire. Get the idea at this point here. So what we're going to do is stop data collection and then we're going to enter in our score which is uh, 1165. Okay now at this point what I'm going to do is take out the SD card and I'm going to feed that into my computer. Now that could have been an Ethernet shield streaming data directly to my server if I wanted to. I just haven't gotten that far yet. So now we're going to go to the actual drive and we're going to go to the drive letter of the data and you can see it's collected the two data files which have been written as common delimited. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to my Dropbox data and I'm going to paste it in and replace it. And then I'm going to go to my ClickSense dashboard that I developed to perform an analysis on that data. So at this point here I'm just going to click refresh and you're going to see Space Invaders, Missile Command, and the number of actions that have taken place, the time elapsed, etc. Okay. Okay, and there are our stats. We played for a minute and 24 seconds. There were two players and two games that were played. The games that were played were Space Invaders and Missile Command. Uh, we played uh, Space Invaders sl uh, slightly longer. Mike played the longest. Uh, you can see that it's actually going to analysis mode. And then you can see that the fire button that was used within Space Invaders and just left and right movements were captured because there was no up and down. Where Missile Command, you actually had up, down, left, right, and fire. And you can see the number of times fired, number of times moved left, right, down, etc. Um, as well as the leaderboard with the scores that have been collected, the, the user and the game. Uh, and this little piece is interesting as well. This is basically just registering all of the movements over time and the number of uh, button presses, if you will. And then you can see in the scatter plot there's a correlation or relationship between total time played as well as the score. So basically the longer you play, most likely you're going to have a higher score. 
Okay, so at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to now fast forward the video and uh, basically show a couple of different collections just to gather more data. Maybe I'll do something with five or more games. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning about my initial journey into IoT. In conclusion, as a people, we are still getting started with it. It has impacted the way we live, work, and play. And to paraphrase a quote from Peter Parker's Uncle Ben, with great power also comes great responsibility. I trust our best and brightest will continue to do good with the technology, improving the lives of many so we may continue to prosper and help others. Now stay tuned where I hope to expand my knowledge on what I've learned so I can enhance my projects. Please like and subscribe and check out these other great resources to learn more about Click, IoT, and ClickSense. Take care guys and I'll see you on the next video.